It's amazing how time flies. As six years after the sudden demise of former governor of Ondo State, Dr. Olushegunko Kumuagagu, CON, his legacy still lives on as the annual memorial lecture in honor of this great man was held on the 13th of September 2019 at the Civic Center, Victoria Island, Lagos. The memorial lecture, which has grown to become a yearly event, was organized by members of the Ulusha Gwagagu Foundation. The foundation is aimed at immortalizing the name and legacy of the late Dr. Ulusha Gwagagu in order to live up to and actualize his personal credo, which was to leave things better than he met them, and also to further the ideals he lived by and worked passionately towards intellectual excellence, good governance, and national development. The sixth memorial lecture was themed climate change and the problem of population migration in Africa. As expected, the event was graced by high-profile personalities from various walks of life, like the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Bafemi Hamzat, who represented the Governor of Lagos State, His Excellency, Mr. Babajide Sawulu, former Commonwealth Secretary General, Chief Emeka Yonko, CFR, CON, who was the chairman of the occasion, former President of the Republic of Mauritius, Dr. Amina Gurib Fakim, former Vice Chancellor, University of Lagos, Professor Oye Ibidakbobe, former Governor of Ogun State, Otsumba Gwenga Daniel, Deputy Governor, Undo State, Mr. Agbolajai, Commissioner for Information, Tourism and Value Orientation, Ekita State, Aremuiwa Lumilua, who represented the Governor of Ekiti State, Dr. Kayode Fayemi, publisher of the Vanguard newspaper, Uncle Sam Amuka, Chief Femi Olokbadi, Vice Admiral Akin Duo, retired, Pro Chancellor and Chairman of Council, Bayero University, Professor Ibrahim Gembari, CFR, among other distinguished guests. Veteran multilingual broadcaster and chairman Biscon Communications, Prince Besiolatilo, who is a close friend of the Agagus, has over the years been the compare for the occasion. And as expected, this year was no different as they ensured the smooth flow of proceedings for the day. The event commenced with the recitation of the national anthem and the opening prayer led by Prince Yemi Adefulu MFR which paved the way for the welcome address of the chairman of the occasion, former Commonwealth Secretary General, Chief Emeka Yonko, CFR, CON. In his remarks, Chief Emeka Yonko commended the Board of Trustees of the Olusha Gwagagu Foundation for establishing the lecture series in memory of the late Dr. Olusha Gwagagu, a man he described as an outstanding scholar, a trusted public servant and a patriotic administrator, who left enduring Max during his tenure in office as Undo State Governor. Thereafter, he welcomed the keynote speaker, guest speaker, as well as other distinguished guests to the memorial lecture. I would like to begin my comments by commending the Olushegu Agagu Foundation and its Board of Trustees for establishing this lecture series in honor of the memory of Dr. Olushegu Agagu, a man whose personal credit was to leave things better than he found them. His life epitomized what the famous British general and writer, Robert Burden Powell, the founder of Boy Scout Movement, for those of you who know this Boy Scout Movement, what he said, that one should try and leave the world a little better than you found it. And when your turn comes to die, you can be happy in feeling that at any rate, you have not wasted your time, but have done your best. Dr. Olushego Agagu 
was an outstanding scholar, a trusted public servant, and a patriotic administrator. Speaking on the theme of the lecture, climate change and the problem of population migration in Africa, Chief Emeka Ayoko said it has been scientifically proven that climate change is one of the greatest challenges facing the global community and that several renowned world scientists have warned that the current behavior of people and nations pose a great threat to the existence of planet Earth. I would like to refer fleetingly to the issue of population movement in Africa as a result of climate change. Here, I see the prospect of what I would like to describe as pincers movement in some low-lying African countries where any significant rise in sea level is bound to compel populations in coastal areas to move upwards to drier lands, while those in the desert and semi-desert regions will be compelled by increasing drought to move towards the coastal regions. Here in Nigeria, it can be said that we are already witnessing population movement from our drier northern region southwards towards the more forested areas with ensuing conflicts occurring in increasing number of cases. After that, a minute silence was observed in honor of the late Dr. Lucia Gwagagu, this was immediately followed by the goodwill message of the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Obafemi Hamzat. He recounted his experience with the late Dr. Lucia Ngagagu, after which he read out the message of the Governor, His Excellency, Mr. Babajide Sonwulu. Today we are gathered to celebrate the memory of Dr. Lucia Ngagagu, an outstanding academic who gave his best effort in nurturing students of geology and environmental engineering at the University of Ibadan. Also, he left behind indelible legacies as governor of Kondo State from May 2003 to February 2009 before he passed on. The efforts of the leadership of this foundation to promote the ideas and legacies of the late Dr. Richard Gwagagu are commendable and worthy of emulation. Dr. Agagu in his lifetime was an affable and cerebral personality who believed in the goodness of mankind and harmony with nature. The occasion of the sixth annual memorial lecture with the adopted theme, Climate Change and the Problem of Population Migration in Africa, is a fitting testimonial to the life of a man who was committed to the promotion of a sustainable environment and habitat. Interestingly, as governor of Lagos State and host of this colloquium, I'm also faced with the challenges of managing the, the environment in the littoral state just like Dr. Agagu during his tenure as governor of Mondo State. The challenges of population migration are an issue based on social economic and environmental factors. It is a phenomenon that should be addressed on multiple levels and not by government alone. It is indeed one of the key consequences of climate change, which we are all presently experiencing in a state like Lagos and other states around the world. The keynote speaker, former president of the Republic of Mauritius, Dr. Amina Gurib Fakim, said it has become very necessary and clear that sustainable development cannot be achieved without actions to adopt to mitigate climate change. And that is why there is an urgent need to take actions to combat climate change and its impacts on growth. It is becoming abundantly clear that the threat of climate change cannot be solved by any one nation working alone. Country-level actions need to be complemented by multilateral efforts. In 2018, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, special reported 
on the consequences of global warming at 1.5 degrees and above. The panel reminded us that the threat to our planet and its people is more serious than we thought. At the 2015 Paris meeting, countries made voluntary pledges to reduce emissions through nationally determined contribution, the famous NDCs. Recent climatic events are constant reminders that along with the, climate, with the change in climate, nature is becoming more ferocious, natural disasters are more frequent, and even more frightening, impacting people the hardest, especially the poor people the hardest. Dr. Amina Garib Fakim added that it has become very clear that the issue of climate change cannot be solved by any one nation walking alone, as it is a collective problem that needs a collective approach to solve. Dr. Amina Gurib Fakim said, climate change has been referred to as the greatest existential threat of our time, as it has cost the global economy about $2 trillion over the last 20 years, noting that about 100 million more people could be driven into poverty by 2030 if nothing is done. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2017 World Economic Report had already identified climate change as one of the five trends that will impact global development. The other four being rising income inequality, increasing polarization of societies, rising cyber dependency, and an aging population. It is abundantly clear that time is running out and that radical actions are needed to cut emissions, sharply reduce the consumption of fossil fuels, and eliminate subsidies while boosting investment in sustainable, renewable energy so as to avert a rise in global temperatures above 1.5 degrees centigrade. It is equally clear that no nation, however small, however large, however wealthy or poor, can escape the full impacts of a changing climate. But the journey is long, the journey will be hard, and time is not on our side. So let us begin the journey now, powered by our own will to create a world that is safer, cleaner, healthier than the one we found. And in doing so, we will create a future that is worthy of our children. Thank you for your attention. This was immediately followed by the remarks of the guest speaker, Professor Oye Bidakbobe, who said climate change is expected to trigger growing population movements within and across borders as a result of factors such as increasing intensity of extreme weather events, sea level rise and acceleration of environmental degradation, adding that climate change will have adverse consequences for livelihoods, public health, food security and water availability, which will in turn impact on human mobility, likely leading to a substantial rise in the scale of migration and displacement. Professor Oye Bidakbobe noted that climate change will cause population movements by making certain parts of the world less viable places to live as a result of food and water shortages, severe flood and storm situations. Climate change is expected to trigger growing population movement within and across borders as a result of such factors as increasing intensity of extreme weather events. People are going to move from one place to the other. They are going to be pushed out of that environment to another one. And what that's what we are so well used to in this country. Sea level rise, the flooding, and so on that we see on coastal areas, will have to um, give rise to people moving away from that elsewhere. This will have adverse effects on livelihood, on public health, security and water availability. This in turn will impact on human mobility, likely leading to a substantial rise in the scale of migration and displacement. The links between climate change 
and migration, however, are usually far from simple and direct. That is, it's not a direct relationship. Climate specific factors are often difficult to isolate from other environmental challenges. So it's important to look at a broader migration and environmental nexus. Other factors such as conflict, governance, level of development also play important roles. Other climate risk Professor Oye Bidakbobe spoke about include continuous increase in temperature, commutation of extreme weather phenomenon, bumper crops and crop failure, polar ice melting, changes in planet ecology, spread of diseases, and attenuation of the North Atlantic drift. He ended his remark by noting that our environment is indeed our future and it is imperative that we intensify efforts to sustain planet Earth for the future. Climate change will cause population movement by making certain parts of the world much less viable places to live. I mean, nobody wants to live on top of the Arctic because of the snow caps and so on and so forth. By causing food and water supplies to become more unreliable and increasing the frequency of the severity of floods and storms. The risk that we see in climate change and the environment include continuous increase in temperature. Now, the whole idea now is to stop the earth's temperature to rise additional 2 degrees Celsius, as the of between 1.5 and 3, and that if this temperature continues to rise, life itself will be extinct. We cannot survive when it gets to about 5%. So what we want to do is to look at what can we do to ensure that this temperature, but that is the most obvious that we see, that this temperature rise is, uh, is reduced. Later on, guests were shown a short video of goodwill messages from the Deputy Secretary General United Nations Ms. Amina Mohammed, OFR, and Chief Olushego Basenjo. This was immediately followed by the question, contribution, and answer segments. Plaques of honor were then presented to the speakers and special guests who took turns to receive them. The vote of thanks was delivered by Amomia Kisoya, Ne Agagu, which brought the event to an end. From Biscon Communications, we congratulate the organizers of the Olusha Guagagu Foundation on the successful hosting of the sixth memorial lecture in honor of the late Dr. Olusha Gokumuagagu. We pray he continues to rest in the bosom of our Lord. Amen. <laughs>